Welcome back, everyone. Over the last several weeks, as a part of the nationwide Clear the Shelters campaign, we have been showcasing local animal shelters, talking to them about the challenges they face finding homes for pets that they take in, as well as encouraging those who are able to, to adopt. So joining us today is Casey Schwarzer with the Lampasas Animal Shelter. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me. So your shelter stands out amongst others that we've had in the studio to talk about uh, because, because you're in a more rural area. Tell us what some of the particular challenges are for a rural animal shelter versus one that might be based in a city. Um, so we have a lot less foot traffic than a lot of shelters will have, so it makes it hard. We're usually always tucked off somewhere, um, you know, on city property, so we don't get the drive-by traffic and things, so it can make moving dogs out a lot harder. Plus, our population is already pretty heavily populated with dogs, so there's not a lot of homes available in our smaller areas. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did report earlier last year that the pandemic really just took a toll on not just your animal shelter, animal shelters across the nation, but your specifically, we understand, um, did have to euthanize a large number of animals. What kind of shape are you guys in right now? Are you guys doing any better? Um, so we're still seeing a lot of animals sitting for a long time, but we have actually reached no-kill status. We are at 98% right now, so uh, we're happy with that, but it's great. It's an everyday struggle. We, we have to face those decisions still every day if we don't find placement or homes or rescues to help us out. How do you achieve that status? Because I have often wondered like how, you know, because a lot of shelters are no kill, but then there are still that do the euthanizing. Is it a certain bar you have to reach or something? Yeah, you have to have 90% live release rate. Um, so a lot of shelters have had to change their intake um, because we can't just accept every animal at any given time anymore. So we've had to offset owner surrenders to when we have space. We've had to stop just taking in community cats and just doing more um, trap, neuter, and releasing to, to keep our populations down. So we really had to change a lot of our management ideas to be able to reach that number. I would imagine you don't have a lot of space to accommodate a whole bunch of animals. What is your capacity and how many do you normally have? Um, so we have a pretty large shelter to be able to hold animals, but we have a very small staff. So our staff being able to care for them is a little different than how many we can hold. So currently right now we have about 40 dogs in our care and we have about 15 cats. And so that the dog numbers have us really stretched. We're about 15 dogs higher than we, what we need to be for our staff. Oh, wow. Well, the Lampasta Shelter has been involved with Clear the Shelter in the past. And by the way, the dog who she was going to bring in today just got adopted yeah. yesterday, which is great news. <laughs> yeah. um, has the doing Clear the Shelter really helped you guys out in the past? And are you hoping that it's the same this time around? So it's always good when we can get a little bit more publicity and, and you know, the net nationwide, um, you know, push. So that really helps us. We don't usually clear our shelter, um, but it, it usually helps us with promotions and things like that. So I think currently we've had 21 get adopted. Unfortunately, most of them were cats. Um, but yeah, we've had a pretty good number this year. How do you say no to those faces? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are the some pretty dogs. Yeah. So cute. We have so many good ones right now. <laughs> so the catch and release, that's something that, uh, that, that goes on in, in a few different areas. That mm -hmm. means that these are normally animals that are, are wild to begin with, like a mm -hmm. feral cat or something? Yes. Yeah, they're cats, community cats. You know, everybody on the street feeds them. Nobody really claims ownership to them. Um, so this past year, we've really been pushing at least getting them caught, spayed and neutered and vaccinated and then turning them back loose. And then if they're a nuisance or an issue, then we can go back there. But the shelters were not built to just take in endless amounts of cats every yeah. day, which is what we used to do. Cats in particular are yeah. reproduce a lot. Do they do, say, because you know, my wife grew up in the country. Cats turn up at the door, cats end up in the mm -hmm. garage, whatever, dogs as well, and they feed them, just like you said. Mm -hmm. They're not theirs, but they'll feed them and, yeah. and such. But if somebody is in that situation and they, they want to bring it to get it uh, spayed or neutered, does it cost them to do that at the shelter? Um, we are really lucky right now. We are in partnership with Best Friends Animal Society, and they have given us a lot of grant money. So right now we do have a lot of options for people to assist with, with the cat side of it. Um, and we have some plans working in the future to help our citizens with some more low-cost options that yeah. we're working on for next month. Well, That's anything we can do to get the word out there. Um, thank you so much thank for you. making the trip here today. I know it was raining this morning, so we appreciate you jumping on the road. <laughs> Casey Schwartzer, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. We'll be right back.